So I think, yes, there's going to be Buckingham Palace. Yes, we're going to be in the House of Parliament. Yes, we might bump into David Beckham or see a bit of football. But behind all that, on the sidelines of the football, at the back of the theatre, on the queue on the way into Parliament, which I reckon Xi Jinping can jump, um, I think there's going to be some very serious discussion going on. We're going to be talking about how we al align our financial systems. I think this is going to be key to the agenda. I think we're going to be looking at Shanghai, London, Stock Connect. I think we're going to be looking at the RMB Clearing Bank. So China is on the threshold of becoming the global superpower. The UK years ago was a global superpower, so I think there's going to be a lot of swapping of notes. The Brits tend to be reserved. They're reluctant about beating their own drum. But now it appears that they are really turning on the charm. Why is that? You know, the Americans push open the door and then the Brits walk quietly through it. And this is why, this is why I think we're turning on the charm, as you put it so well, now. Because we realise the time is now. China's economy is moving up the value chain. It's no longer about importing agricultural goods. It's not just about cars. It's not just about roads. It's about investment in real estate. It's about developing uh, agricultural investment overseas. It is about Alibaba beginning to rule the sort of global internet sphere. You know, China has 660 million internet users. This is a very large middle class. And the UK, this is just when the UK comes of age in terms of international relations because we have the creative industries, the educational opportunities and the financial and legal services to take a country like China from good to great. The UK has been the top attraction for Chinese investments in the EU um, with Germany and France behind it. So what gives the UK its edge in attracting Chinese investments? The UK is a perfect stepping stone to globalisation for China. We're not going to compete, we're just going to be a conduit in that international process. You know, we're going to make the City of London the perfect stepping stone to global financial markets. I note that the highest concentration of Chinese banks outside of China is in London. That means something. And the second reason is language. It, to be honest, I mean, it's just a histor historical accident that the UK is the international, sorry, that English is the international language of business. And it just makes it easier. Maybe Mandarin will become the international language of business, but maybe you can come and teach us that now. So we're ready for the future where China is the superpower. So I'd say language. And I'd say the other thing is, we, our legal system is different to Germany and France. We have common law. Um, and they have civil law. You know, common law means that not all our laws written by legislators, a lot of it's decided by custom and what actually works in business. You know, we follow case law. What happened last time will apply this time. So it's a very free trading zone. If Ping An wants to come to London and buy the Lloyds building, we're not going to say, oh, hello, I think it's a security risk. And then we're not going to slap, if Huawei wants to put their European headquarters in London, which they have, we are not going to say to Huawei, oh yeah, you're going to pay 33% corporate tax like you do in France or 29.9% corporate tax like you do in Germany. 